So what is new Prime Minister Naftali Bennett's and alternate Prime Minister Yair Lapid's plan to reunite the country? And what kinds of policy changes can you actually expect from this fledgling government? Joining me to discuss, I'm here with Prime Minister's Office Media Advisor Jake Fishman, Chair of the Zionist Horizon as well as Political Analyst Do Harlap. And then on Zoom, we also have political commentator Tami Mulad Hayo and religious Zionism party Knesset member Sim Rotman. Thank you all so much for joining us. Tami, I'm going to start with you. Among the first orders of businesses outlined by the new government is setting term limits to four-year limits for the prime minister's office. Do you think that it's time Israel had such a limitation? Well... Yes, it's time, but now is not the time. Um, it, it seems like a like a like a personal issue. At the end of the day, yeah, we need we need to have uh, some kind of uh, of uh, of a working democracy, and we have to have some some guidelines about for how long can can anyone uh, sit in office, but. Right now, it seems like it's it's more something against Netanyahu. And even though I'm not for Netanyahu at all, uh, I'm very much against personal uh, legislation. Do do you do you see a personal tinge to this legislation? Uh, first of all, yes, I agree with what she said. Even though that you can still make the law in a way that it will be start to count only from today, not from what we had before, because Netanyahu is not prime minister anymore. Uh, unfortunately, is my opinion. But I don't think it makes sense to have this law at all in our um, political system because, um, because we have a parliamentary system that we have parties with seats that they show um, a specific uh, population, specific demographics, some of them. Some of them are more general like the Likud or um, the Labour. Um, but every party is picking only uh, the person who's going to lead the party. They don't pick the prime minister, and we don't have an election for prime minister. We have election for seats in our parliament. So I don't think this limitation can make any sense. It's not like the administrations in the U.S. where the we president... We have term limits for other positions, though. Not for elected by this kind of way of... We have for... Uh, no, not, not something... We have for the president, okay? But our president is something which doesn't have any power with it. Doesn't... Um, represent people, like specific. All right, well, Jake, I want to turn to you now with a, with a slightly new question. In terms of unity, because Bennett and Lapid are both saying it's time to, to rejoin this country, and they say that they are going to be the arbiters of that unity. Uh, where do Bennett and Lapid have to go, however, to turn the public opinion around? Because right now, it is really roughly 50-50 with many people, many of them staunch supporters of Bennett's in the past, now opposing. That's right. We're under very unusual circumstances where this unity government does not have to simply do a, a task of moving forward with pleasing a, a voter base that is very similar, right, homogeneous. We have eight parties that represent eight different types of ideologies and foundations and uh, voter bases. Uh, and so to move this forward in, in a way in terms of the media in a, in a homogeneous state, in a full front, to get voters and Israel at large behind this new unity government, uh, they're going to have to run on a very similar kind of, let's say, slogan, right? And, and the slogan that's uniting them currently is is bye-bye is Netanyahu, right? Is bye-bye Bibi. And so I think if they continue to use the opposition to allow them to maintain control, uh, we'll see a united push. Do you see... And, and let's say for uh, the sake of argument that Netanyahu retires, which as of right now, it doesn't seem like that's likely, but let, let's say Netanyahu were not in the equation. Is that the end of the unity government? I think it's, it's one of the, the legs of the chair falling out, yes. Uh, now, would that lead to a collapse? It's hard to say. But I do believe strongly that the leverage that Netanyahu is bringing in the opposition is allowing the public to feel that uh, laying down some of their principles and some of their ideologies and the reasons that they voted for even Bennett or Lapid, that they, they laid them down and go, I accept the fact we need to make some... Knesset members mentioned this, we need to make some sacrifices. We need to make some sacrifices. All right. Uh, Knesset member Rothman, thank you so much again for being with us. Now, uh, I want to ask you about uh, the Justice Ministry because in Bennett's speech, she also said that the Justice Ministry designate... Uh, Gideon Saar will lead a process to create an appropriate balance between the judicial, legislative, and executive branches of government, whereby his initiative to split the role of the attorney general is a significant first step. 
Uh, I've, I've spoken to you numerous times about the judiciary and, and a lot of the issues with the legislature and the judiciary in, in Israel. What do you know of the details of Sal's plan, and, and do you agree or conflict with it? Um, it's, a, it's a lot. A lot of it depends, really, as you said, on the details. Um, and and it's not ha, has not been revealed yet. Um, but I can say one thing. Um, uh, my my issues with with the justice system, which I talk about for many many years, um, and I was uh, I was a very loud opposition for Netanyahu and for the governments that used to be in the past uh, few years. Um, besides the fact that uh, on other issues I support them and I'm part of the right wing. Uh, Politically, but as a, as the legal advisor of Meshilut, the movement for governability and democracy, I was criticizing the government of Netanyahu just the same, because I believe that um, changing, reforming the justice system, reforming uh, the role of the chief legal advisor, which has no uh, similar um, equivalent any any anywhere anywhere around the world. It's something that's not supposed to be a debate between the right and the left in Israel. So I first, um, I think it might be the only thing that I that my, this government might be able to push forward because on many other issues, um, it's a it's a conflict of right and left. On this issue, you can find people, uh, sadly not enough, but you can find people on the left, on the right, that believe that needs to, that needs to be changed. Um, um, I can't say if it's sadly or happily. Um, I don't believe this government will last long enough to do this reform. But uh, but uh, that's that's why I'm not uh, I'm not celebrating today. Even though one of the major policy issues that my party and myself pushed forward for many years um, was finally adopted um, in the coalition agreement and by a by a justice minister who wants to do this for many years. Uh, that's why I'm not so happy, besides all the arguments about the government. All right. Tommy, uh, one of my final que questions before we move on to a new topic. Uh, former Prime Minister Netanyahu largely hailed as being a strong face for Israel, especially on the international stage. How do you expect Israel's image to likely change with Netanyahu now in the opposition, especially with the new foreign minister being Yair Lapid? Well, first of all, Yair Lapid, um, well, he's, uh, he's very good in front of cameras, mm. and he knows how to, uh, how to stand in front of an audience. But, you know, the, the one thing I expect Netanyahu to do, that if he really cares about the state of Israel and the people of Israel, is even if he is in the uh, opposition, he is uh, expected to still speak out for Israel. We are all expected to speak out for Israel. Um, the, whatever criticism he has, well, he should do it as well. He and his supporters used to shout all the time inside the, inside the home, not, not outside. And towards the, 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 the world, um, he should be, he should be uh, one of the representatives of Israel. But also I have to say that Naftali Bennett, Yair Lapid, and the rest of the people in this government well, they, they know what they're doing. They're not just people who came out of the street into the Knesset. They are all uh, seasoned politicians, people who have done one or two things. They know how to speak English, and Netanyahu is not the only one. Uh, they know how to, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to reconnect and to connect with, with the rest of the world. And we've seen it already, because one of the first uh, phone calls that, that Bennett uh, received was from Biden. And it was a, it was a very pleasant phone call. So... I'm not worried in that sense. I'm, well, I'm very worried about that because I don't know, should I be worried more from the new administration, the new government here in Israel or the administration in the United States with Joe Biden? It's, it's a bad situation for the Jewish people those days. I, I, I'm sorry, I have to say that. It's a crazy situation. Um, I think that the Iran uh, agreements will be in a prob problematic uh, position by our side. I think that many issues that we have with the U.S., are now going to be in a problematic situation because we have like like which issues? Um, Iran nuclear deal. That's that's a main well, issue. I mean, so far they, the Bennett new coalition has said that they that yes, they don't but they have the Muslim the, the Muslimim inside their own coalition. They have Arabs in the coalition. Now I don't I don't say it doesn't that necessarily Netanyahu, mean that they're going to be suddenly pro the Iran deal. 
Um, I think that Benny Gantz and the left-wing parties in this coalition are kind of confused about what should be Israeli interests um, on this issue. But so I'm, I'm worried about that. That's all I have to say. All right, well, I suspect that I suspect that I suspect that uh, that uh, Bennett's um, uh, position uh, regarding the, the the Iranians is exactly the same as Netanyahu. Maybe the difference right. between the two is while Netanyahu has put himself in a in a very uh, in a very uh, narrow position, opposing the U.S., opposing Europe. Mm. Maybe now Bennett will be able to work with them to to a, to reach some kind of a, of a better deal. It's, it's not Bennett opposing can't... anyone. It's being he for our won. interests. It's not opposing anyone. Yeah, Nuclear but, Iran know, at the end of is the day, not good for us. You have to remember, uh, well, the, the whole world does not revolve Israel. The, the, the whole exactly world the problem, is, revolves the Iranian, the Iranian issue, Tami, not exactly because of Israel. Simcha? Tami, that's exactly the problem. You are 100% right. The whole world does not uh, revolve around the state of Israel. But I want my prime minister to be 100% around Israeli interests. And the fact that I suspect, and, and, and to, stand, uh, to stand your ground, to stand Israel's ground um, against, yes, and sometimes it means against the U.S., Europe, some other countries, you need to have a strong coalition behind you. No one in this government is strong coalition. We found in this coalition, some, some members of this coalition once, uh, once uh, Israeli soldiers to be trialed in international courts. Oh, they said it in their own voice to say that they, they will they help. They didn't take Bennett it back. Well, so, maybe even the people. Oh, all right, well, so, so I want... They will help. So, so I, want to, I want to speak a little bit more uh, uh, about the concerns with respect to the Arab, uh, the Arab Ram party being in the coalition. And Jake, I'm going to turn back to you for this. Meretz leader Nitzan Horowitz, who we just uh, heard a little bit about, about Meretz being a left-wing uh, mm -hmm. party, they said during his speech... He, Meretz leader Nitzan Horowitz said during his speech on Ram's participation that it's the answer to all the racism uh, and to those who carried out violence and uh, who want to mark all Arabs in this country as the enemy. How do you respond? So I, I think that we're having a kind of a, a trending word of unity uh, that comes also from the West, comes from uh, the Biden campaign and, and also after he entered office, we hear a lot about unity. Uh, so I think that that came also in a bit of a delay here in Israel, this, this concept of unity, which everyone loves and everyone can connect with that. Um, I think that actually bringing that into fruition is the real challenge, right? And, and we live in a land that's complex, surrounded by enemies and some friends, right? But we're dealing in a complex situation. And to have inside the house, um, you know, Knesset members who connect on enough topics that there's enough political leverage to keep this thing together, this coalition, if we can do that long enough, I think that there can be absolutely some unity that comes out of this. But I think even more than that, with all that put to the side, we have an unprecedented event here. We have something that just happened for the very first time, um, that we have an Arab party in the coalition. And that is significant. So. All right. Uh, now, I, I want to turn back to you, uh, Simcha, because I want to talk a little bit more about the, the opposition as well, such as it is. Former Prime Minister and Likud Chair Netanyahu vowing to work tirelessly uh, towards undermining this new coalition. Simcha, Betzal Smotrich and uh, fellow religious Zionist party members Itamar Ben Gvir, Orit Struk, they all had to be escorted from the plenum yesterday for following their comments and their heckling during the Knesset session. Bennett responded that the screams are as loud as their failures when they were in office. How do you, res how do you respond to this comment? First, I don't, if I remember correctly, um, they weren't, uh, um, and I also was uh, kicked out of the plenum um, for the same reason. It's not, it was not about uh, shouting or, uh, or using uh, bad words or whatever reasons. It was because we showed uh, pictures, that we showed pictures of um, terror victims uh, because we were asked by uh, the families of those terror victims to, uh, to, uh, go against what exactly it's the first time not it's not in the first time we have an arab uh, a person in the government we did have a, an arab minister few and a lot of non-jews ministers um, uh, um through the years but what is the first time that we have is we have a party that supports terror 
And that's why we, uh, we uh, um, showed those pictures and we were kicked out for, because of that, not because uh, shouting. And definitely you can't say about Ritz Truk that she didn't do anything in office. Also, Itamar Ben-Gvir, they, they were never ministers. Uh, in fact, we came into this Knesset as an opposition party. We weren't part of the current, the last uh, government. We were uh, uh, opposition to the, this government exactly for the same reason. Some of it, some, re some of the reasons are we are in the opposition of this, this, this government. Because a government that is built on, uh, that does not share the same ideology, that does not share the same goals, that does not agree on where Israel needs to go, uh, is a government that cannot push forward anything. It will be uh, busy and tired with the inner fights, and we will have a, a dysfunctioning government. All right, Dahl, speaking of uh, internal fighting, it's largely suspected that now, going into the opposition, Netanyahu will be usurped by members of his own party, uh, Nir Barkat, uh, Yuli Edelstein. Uh, also, members of UTJ have said that, you know, they, they've expressed regret for maybe not pushing Netanyahu out further for political gains. Do you, do you think that this is going, that I'll, Netanyahu going to the opposition is the beginning of the end of his career? I will see what, I will say what I think about this week um, events. We saw that Netanyahu is not going to leave the stage, okay? And the Likud is a democratic party. So, and I believe that there, if will be a primary for the head of the Likud, Netanyahu will win again. Whoever will oppone, uh, oppone him, um, and he will be first again, okay? So, um, and the people will follow him, okay? Because I think that the whole um, right wing in Israel, they understand that it's not that Netanyahu was kicked out because of personal issues or before, because anything like that. He was moved aside because he represented right wing uh, national um, uh, interests, ideas, ideologies. Um, and that's why he was move, moved aside. And, and we can see who was happy this week and who was, wasn't. Um, now, I want to say another thing about this um, unity-wide coalition, okay? It was a very uh, funny, ridiculous thing to see this week, okay, in the vote that they got 60 uh, for the new government and 59 against the government. After they tried to play every uh, shtick and trick and they, they spoke with every specific personal uh, parliament member just to make sure that they have the votes. And again, they, they won by one, okay? And then in, in the... In the in the press, they call it a wide unity government. Okay, I, that's a joke. This is not going to be a unity government. It will be a paralyzed government. All right. Well, the I think, I think they were talking unites, about the different the parties, unites, and and not not so much not so much the majority. The only thing that unites this government is a hatred for one person, and not only to one person, but to the public that this one person all right, represents. Well, so, so, so with um, all, with I, all of that in mind, with all of that in mind, uh, and uh, with respect. Uh, Knesset member Sam Chagot and I, I and Dol, I just wanted to take what you guys are saying right now and, and bring it actually over to Jake Fishman. Again, uh, Netanyahu is saying that he's going to be working tirelessly from the opposition to overturn this uh, this vote of confidence to overturn this uh, new coalition. But having tried everything in the book, as Dol just explained, and they still lost, do you see any do you see any chance of that happening? I think that as a leader of the opposition, Netanyahu, will be incredibly strong. Yeah, I mean, he knows politics. Um, and so whether it's leading the coalition or leading the opposition, I, I think that he will be looking for every mistake and every opening with, with the coalition to expose weakness and to uh, essentially allow it to topple over and, and lead us to another range of elections, perhaps. All right, well, I think that We'll have to wait and see. This is a brand new government. We don't know what, what's going to happen next. But in the meantime, thank you so much, Jake Fishman, Do Harlap, Knesset member Simcha Otman, and uh, political analyst Tami, Tami Mulad Hayo.